<laughs> this electric bike has two motors, two batteries, two suspensions, and a price tag that starts with a two as well. Although there is a discount link below this video. It's called the Mila DK300 Max. And skimming the spec sheet here, it looks like a pretty interesting bike. Dual 22 amp controllers, four piston hydraulic brakes. I'm not gonna bore you reading the specs. Let's crack this thing open and take it out for a full review. And woo! Look what we have here. CST Scout tires. That's right, some tires with a street friendly tread pattern. Might be a little bit more efficient than the typical knobby tread that we get. Up front we will be running 160 millimeter rotors and the motor on the front wheel is stamped Milad. Claims to be rated for 1200 watts. We'll shake this dust off soon. And here's what it looks like when you get it out of the box. The battery on top and bottom are slightly different shape. The bottom battery is listed as a 48 volt, 20 amp hour, 960 watt hours of energy. Oh, different keys for different batteries. Battery on top also listed as 48 volt, 20 amp hour. This one has a little switch to turn on and off. And up front we get a dual crown fork. Of course it has suspension with an adjustment for the compression on the right as well as preload on the left. Which is great, but perhaps more importantly, we get rear suspension. Which in my opinion on a moped style e-bike where you have all of your weight sitting over the rear is super important for comfort. This is a coil mono shock with decent travel. Here's the exact shock we're working with. And of course another key component of comfort is the seat. So we'll feel that out soon. Everybody's gonna know you're on a Milad. And check out how far that rear wheel sticks out past the back. It's got this really stretched appearance. I'm curious how it's gonna affect the ride. Chainring up front does not appear to be geared for pedaling past 28 miles an hour. But that's all right because this e-bike has got a twist throttle for that. And around back we do get a derailleur guard. So in case you knock your bike over it'll protect your Shimano Tourney derailleur which controls the seven gears on your Shimano cassette. Here's our second Milad motor on the rear. Another metal fender on the rear. Light appears to be wired into the bike. The dual controller should be mounted down here in this box. So in the case you did want to turn this thing into a monster, you probably could crack into that box and upgrade the controllers to push even more than 22 amps of current to those dual motors. Let's see what's in the box. Charger, of course. 4.5 amps. Not bad at all. One charger, two batteries, 20 amp hour battery pack, charging at 4.5 amps. So about four and a half hours to charge each of these from completely empty to completely full. For a single battery, that's actually a pretty quick charge rate. I wonder if they give us two chargers though. Whoa, 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 whoa. Actually, this one has a little splitter. Cuts off into two. So if you're charging 20 plus 20, 40 amp hours divided by 4.5 amp charge rate, be more like nine hours from empty to full for both at the same time. Interesting package, pedals, and our light and tools. Handlebars are BMX style with a rise, round rubber grips, twist throttle, horn, and appears to be a switch for the dual motors. We'll see. Shimano shifter for the seven gears. Left side will contain our display. Get that powered up soon. Hydraulic brakes are branded Milad and have a good shape to the levers. Feel like zoom brakes to me. And speaking of brakes, let's get this thing flipped around. The hydraulic brakes also have Milad calipers and they are four piston hydraulic brakes. It's also running a 160 millimeter rotor on the rear. It's a mildly interesting combination. I'm curious to see how it's gonna perform. Here's the pedals. Axle mounts in a somewhat interesting way. And as I'm struggling to pop this front wheel on, I notice these are the exact stampings on the motor for those of you who care. Look at that smoke. <laughs> this is an electric motor burning up, boys and girls. <laughs> Probably shouldn't be breathing that. <laughs> I'm having way too much fun doing this. <sighs> Wonder if it's gonna catch on fire. <laughs> Can't be good for the motor. <laughs> I think the battery is starting to get a little bit warm. This is a job for the tail happy drill. It's all built. So let's pop the batteries on. And we'll fire it up in just a moment. A little, a little bit of weight to it. But first, let me show you how I look on it. I have an inseam of 34. I'm six foot five. Definitely has a stretched out appearance. Easy step over for me. Coil shock appears to be working just fine. Seems like it's pretty decent. Here's what my pedal stroke looks like. Chain lined up. Seems pretty decent. And these tires seem to be a little bit stickier. 
than my typical tires I have on budget bikes. So let's power it up. Milad! Oh, then we have to enter a password. Wonder what it is. Zero to start, good guess. First thing we can see in here is indeed a color display. We get a little blue, a little orange. So we do get our uh, pedal assist modes here. Looks like there are five indicated beautifully here on the left. And we get a battery percentage readout on the right in terms of a percentage. Looks like a little bar there kind of indicating your fuel. There are three giant buttons which you can't really see right here. Tab on that and it looks like this actually toggles the uh, dual motor, rear motor, or front motor. So you can run whatever motor setup you want. Pretty cool. Wonder what the horn sounds like. Wow, interesting. And you can activate the front headlight by holding the plus button. It's a pretty bright headlight. Turn it back off. Not sure how much this bike weighs, but the dual batteries are definitely adding some weight. Holding that plus button will turn on the rear light, which if you pull the brake lever, there is no brake light. Turn off that front light, pull brake levers. Oh wait, there is a brake light. When the light's not on, you get a brake light. When the light is on, you do not get a brake light. <laughs> Interesting, no signals. Here's a slightly better look at the three buttons you get here. And on the bottom side, there's actually a USB charger for your cell phone or something right down there. Initially, I thought this switch here might be for dual motors, front motors, or maybe turn signals. However, you turn on the light and this switch actually just kind of operates different light modes. So there's an option for like this kind of like halo look or the bottom light or the top light, which is brighter. So let's see what happens if we fire up the rear motor. Pulse is five, ready, go. Got a little bit of pep. Under no load, single motor, it will spin up to 30. Four. What about front motor? It's too ridiculous. Oh, that's on the pedal assist four. Whoa. Put it on front motor. Oh, I didn't plug it in. Oops, that'll do it. Seems safe. Oh, oh, oh no. More skid marks. Front motor. Yeah, buddy. Shall we try dual motor? Whoa, this is stupid. Oh no, I think I broke the kickstand. Don't do that. Oh, bummer. Dang it. It's just too much weight, dude. Look what I did, it's cracked. So broken. All right, my dudes, let's take the Mila DK 300 backs out for a ride. We'll fire up the Strava here so we can track our official range on these dual 48 volt, 20 amp hour batteries. I'm pretty pumped to see how these dual motors are gonna run out there, especially on these street tires. Fire this thing up. We are on back motor to start. And I am noticing when I go to pull the back brake, it will Temporary light up that front light before it turns on the brake light. Interesting quirk. So let's go ahead and test it out on the 20% grade on a variety of motor conditions. So we'll have it on pedal assist five, rear motor only, no pedaling. Uh, let's just go ahead and see what it can do on rear motor only. We'll put it on dual motor here in just a moment. So it's actually almost getting us up with no pedaling on rear motor. We're gonna bow. <laughs> let me under, let me under, let me under. Let me, oh. So let's go ahead and tap that button here, put it on front motor, try front motor only, see what it'll do on front motor only. Just out of curiosity, you know? Meh. So it's actually pulling this up almost. It's not like peeling out. I can feel it starting to give out a little bit. And now we'll go ahead and put it on dual motor, which is what you're gonna do. A little bit of wheel spin there, a little bit of fun, and we're hauling right up 10 miles an hour, launching out of the 20% grade. And man, this thing's got some power behind it for sure. Pedal assist zero will give you absolutely no power. Let's go ahead and put on pedal assist one. Oh man, yeah, a lot of torque here. Let's go ahead and try the pedal assist modes though. So start pedaling here just a little bit. I forget if this is a cadence sensor or a torque sensor. We're gonna find out. So we are on gear two, gear three, gear five, six, gear seven on pedal assist one. This thing uh, gets moving on pedal assist one on dual motor. Don't think I've tested this display with polarized lenses. Can you see it through the polarized lenses? Yes, awesome. So let's go ahead and uh, see. What is this thing? What do we got going on here? Is this a torque sensor or a cadence sensor? Feels like a cadence sensor to me. Let's go ahead and uh, bump it on to rear mode, see if that changes. Oh yeah, you can tell it has a little less power with one motor. Well, probably half the power. So yeah, if you wanna go slowly, put it on rear motor and now it'll uh, take us up to only about like, well, it's still gaining. <laughs> 13 miles an hour or so. Yeah, right around 15 miles an hour on pedal assist one. Let's try pedal assist two. And this bike, you know, if you're tall, you're really not gonna be uh, putting much pedaling in on this bike. This one's an awkward one for me to pedal. So whatever range we get, it's basically gonna be throttle only. I'm just kind of testing the pedal assist right now. So pedal assist two is still holding us at uh, 15. Let's go ahead and bump it on over to, well, that's front motor. It feels, it actually is giving a little bit more power on front motor than the rear motor. Let's do dual motor. Oh yeah, you feel it basically double the power. So pedal assist two now, we're going up to 
Man, 21. Yeah, it's just kind of holding us at 21, and I'm ghost pedaling at this point. It's hard for me to keep up with the pedaling at 20. And these tires, man, they make a little bit of different noise. The CST Scout, I think, is what they were. So these are street tires. Definitely feel the weight going into the corners. Not really in a bad way, but you know, it doesn't feel so much like a bicycle as a motorcycle with a motor on the front and dual batteries. There's a lot of weight going on here, a lot of electronics going on here. Let's go ahead and try Pedal Assist 3, see what it does now. We got somebody crossing the road here. Not expecting a bicycle to be coming in this hot. 25 on Pedal Assist 3 and gaining. I'm ghost pedaling. I'm just going to use a throttle at this point. Oh yeah, so I think the throttle gives you all the power. Let's actually bump that down to Pedal Assist 1 and just goose it here. Yeah, I think uh, feels like that's giving us all the power. Now we're going 25. Oh man. Oh, we are on cruise control, I think. So brakes are 160 millimeters. We'll see how they pan out for the day. You can feel there's a little bit of mass behind these uh, rotational mass behind these motors and wheels. I really like this display. I like that it shows us our battery percentage right there, 97%, and uh, shows us that we're on a dual motor right now. And then you can independently run, you know, one battery or two batteries. So you can turn this one off. You can turn this one off. I think they're both on right now. I'm pretty sure they're both on. And despite the uh, stretched appearance of the bike, which is cool, uh, the seat actually kind of brings you pretty close up to the handlebars here, so you will have no trouble reaching them. At six foot five, I'm, you know, pretty tight in the cockpit here. This feels comfortable and upright. Dang it, I totally forgot to tighten down this brake lever. Oh well, it'll still work. Come on, dude. Oh, I think it actually worked. It turned yellow. The default setting for cruise control is on. Uh, I was just holding a throttle for a second or two, and we're cruising at 18. Now the tires on this bike are set up for street riding, which probably is what most people are going to be doing. Uh, we can do a little bit of off-roading. Suspension is uh, fairly plush, you know, it's not like amazing, but it's not bad at all. So pedal assist four, let's see what the pedaling will do. Uh, we are on dual motor. I'm ghost pedaling on pedal assist four. It's doing 21, 23, 25. Somebody's eating some food here. 29. Let's do pedal assist five, see if that'll, let's just open up the throttle now. Oh no, throttle. Throttle is not giving us power over Wait, what happened here? Throttle is giving us power. Let's get in the fast lane. So we are showing 31, 32. 32 still giving us power. We'll get out the GPS and verify in a moment. Super torquey feel on bike. I'm excited to try the zero to 20. Well, that's what happened back there. The cruise control kicked on. We're gonna have to turn off the cruise control. It's kind of annoying. It just turns on so quickly. Get a little bit of lane splitting in here. And I don't intend on pedaling anymore the rest of the day. I actually don't see a way to turn off cruise control in here. And we'll get that brake lever tightened up. All right, let's try the zero to 20 speed. We got Got it on dual motor, pedal assist five, throttle only, GPS on the left hand. Ready, oh, better could not go quite yet. <laughs> Ready, go. Nice launch, no, no wheel spin. 10, 20, 25. This thing's pretty freaking quick. And actually, uh, cruise control kicked on. So I don't know, maybe I should run it back one more time. Speedometer does lag a little bit. Ready, go. So yeah, a little lag on that speedometer. And pedestrian 20. Yeah, this thing's pretty freaking zippy. One notable characteristic, there's really no wheel spin. A lot of these bikes, like the front wheel just spins out when I accelerate this quickly. So maybe it's the CST Scout tires. I'm not really sure. Despite this feeling like a motorcycle, brake setup is, uh, oh, whoa. <laughs> brake setup is bicycle setup. So back brake is on the right. Yeah, dude, this bike is cruise control happy. That thing is always just kicking on cruise control. You know, it's just occurred to me riding down the road here. Maybe the reason that front tire is not spinning out is because of like the stretched wheelbase kind of puts more of your weight down on the front wheel. I don't know, I'm just speculating. Let's see, is there a way to turn off that cruise? If so, it's not obvious. Let's go ahead and give it a top speed run. We are pedal assist five, dual motor, ready, go. GPS in the left hand. And we're gonna have to let up the, thro th <laughs> let up the throttle here. Well, now we're good. 25, 30, and we are cruising. I'm gonna tap the brake and then full throttle again. What the heck? All right, full throttle, 30. So speedometer looks to be accurate. 31 on the GPS, 32 on board, 32. I saw 30, 33. It's a little bit faster, I think. I think I said it all. Oh, camera turned off. We're cruising. We're cruising at 33. Full throttle. Yeah, 32, 33, man. Not too bad on the DK300. 
Max. <laughs> oh, these electric bicycles are getting out of control, man. It's on that top speed run. My camera, my GoPro turned off on me. This happens all the time. These GoPros suck sometimes, but I, I, I turned it back on while I was going on cruise control on 33. So we really need to be 100% certain that both of these batteries are on. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. All right, we're good. A little bit of wheel spin there. I wonder if we could climb that hill over there. I mean, we are running street tires, so it's not going to be optimal for riding in the sand, but we'll give it a try. Let's go ahead and start barreling into this at about 16 miles an hour up hills. So, yeah, no problem. <laughs> Ugh, suspension test. So suspension is actually not bad at all on this one. It's like a pretty soft, like kind of medium middle of the road, like plushness. So it's, you know, not too firm, but it's not bottoming out either. I actually think the, the suspension setup on this one is pretty good for my weight of 200 pounds. It actually, it kind of reminds me of like a Jeep Wrangler or like a pickup truck with all the weight and stuff. If that makes any sense at all. All right, dudes, let's go rip it out in the sand, see how it does. I mean, it doesn't have tires for off-roading, but I would think it's got torque for off-roading. Go ahead and give it a full throttle here. I'm not gonna pedal this thing at all out here. We'll see how it does. Mostly see how the battery holds up and how the motors hold up if anything overheats or anything so full throttle we are doing 12 miles an hour and i can tell that these tires are just really not cut out for off-roading you know they're optimized for street riding so if you're trying to do some off-roading i'd switch it over to some novies and i'm gonna flip the brake there do a full throttle once we get down here on the the, the harder packed sand man we're we're really whipping now i'm not even pressing on the throttle Oh shoot, I missed my exit, I think. We gotta try and go up this pretty steep part here. Oh my goodness, are we gonna... Oh, oh. <laughs> oh I totally just lost it. <laughs> that was kind of fun, man, falling into the sand. Oh, there we go, let's see how, let's see if we got any damage or anything. Can it hold up to a crash in the sand? Looks like we're good. I put a new kickstand on there after the first one I broke. Oh no, I think I broke the kickstand. Uh, oh no, we got the handlebars twisted. So I'll get out my tools. Good thing I brought them. <laughs> Actually, let's go ahead and just continue on here. I've got a little rattle going on in the back and we are pulling right through the sand here just fine. Business as usual, just the handlebars turned a little bit here. <laughs> going into that little sand section, I had a feeling that's exactly what was gonna happen. So uh, the tires, you know, they really just didn't grip in like they normally would with some knobbies. Good thing that was a crash in the sand. I'm like, that did not even like hurt. <laughs> if that was on pavement, that would have been way worse. That'll do it. It actually looks like, like a little bump right there. So not here, it is here. Regardless of the tires, you really just can't beat the all wheel drive in the sand. I mean, look at this, decimating. Hey, who needs an electric skateboard when you got that set up? How about that? Let's go ahead and whip it through here. I'm so scared after I uh, ate it over there. Dual motors, it's the best. Just whip on through here. And this bike probably has a little bit more power than the legal limits capable of putting down, but nothing that's probably gonna get us in trouble around here. It's got pedals, right? So let's continue on over here to the California Incline. It's a 12% grade, 85 foot climb. Let's see what kind of effect it has on the dual batteries and what kind of speed we can hit. Currently, we are reading out 74%. So we'll go ahead and torture this thing going up the loop-de-loop -loop here full. Well, let's see if we can do full throttle even. And full throttle. And we'll have the opportunity to test these brakes out at the bottom here before we crash into that wall. So full throttle here. 12, 18. We're probably on cruise control. 20, 22. Pulling 23, still gaining. 25, 26, 27, and gaining. We're gonna go ahead and tap on the brakes. 27 miles an hour on the California incline. It's not do shabby boys and girls so i'll go ahead and whip it around test the brakes going down the california incline nothing like the drop top down in the middle of this no not December. january let's see what we can do going down holy smokes pretty strong headwind here 31 33 34 we're gonna tap on the brakes there's people so back brake is on the right they are our hydraulic brakes 160 millimeter rotors <laughs> you can feel this thing got some weight to it coming to a stop. They do feel smooth. 160 millimeter rotor seems to be pretty typical of the standard on 20 inch wheels. They're totally sufficient. I like the feel of the levers on these ones. Wrong side of the road, bro. So if we give them a little test here from about 20 miles an hour, let's see how quickly they will stop. And yeah, there we go. Not bad at all. Got a little bit of, a little bit of wheel spin there. Really? 
Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> All around, uh, Vila, it's a pretty fun bike, downsides. Uh, I kind of wish that the cruise control wouldn't keep kicking on by itself. And the seat is soft. I wish it was a little bit wider. Uh, not too bad. I think the street tires are the way to go. Don't ride it in the sand if you don't want to end up like me. MSRP is 2,500 bucks, but it is on sale in the link below this video, which right now what it's listed for is a fair price in my opinion. I mean, dual battery, dual motor. This thing whips pretty good. So let's go see what kind of range we get out of these batteries. We're sitting at... 67%. And of course, if you do want to buy this bike, use the link below this video in the description box that will give you the best price and also help support my reviews. That dude's out there whipping on the sand. Let's head on home, see what the final range is. Yeah, buddy. Oh, I'm scared after crashing earlier. Let's see what this thing's got left in it. 62%. Looks like we're hitting about 31, 32, 33. It's still got the juice. Keep it on the traffic pretty nicely out here. 32 miles an hour. Yeehaw. Let's get in the fast lane. The beauty of dual batteries is you can run them freaking hard for long. There's a C8 exempt. A whale. Better be on our good behavior. Just rolling back in the neighborhood here, dudes. Uh, rolling up on 18 miles. Right about now, hour 22 minutes ride time. MC 13 miles an hour, pretty decent. And the batteries are showing 52%. So riding the way I rode today, you know, you might do 40 miles, you know, whipping. Honestly though, if you went slower, you should be able to get a lot more range out of these. All around, it's a pretty fun bike. If you do want to grab one, buy through the link below in the description box. That will give you the best price on this e-bike and it will also help support Tell Heavy TV. Hey there, buddy. However, if this is not the kind of electric bicycle you're looking for, watch this video next. Catch you over there.